my Christians tithe or my Christian give tithe. There's another issue with should we use the word pay or give? That is another um, issue that we're going to be having. But today we are going to look at Genesis chapter 14 and Hebrews chapter 7 when we talk about must Christians tithe. Now I tithe, I still do tithe, tithe and my wife, we give our tithe the 10%. So tithing, should Christians give tithe right here, tithing. Now we're going to look at a case study from Abraham, Father Abraham. Now, the, the, what I'm trying to, for us to concentrate is on is inside the mind, inside the mind and the heart of Abraham. That is the whole point today. We are not going to look at anything else. Inside the mind of Abraham, tithing, inside the mind of Abraham, inside the mind and the heart of Abraham. That is what, if we can talk to Abraham, what will he tell us? What will he say? If we can ask Father Abraham questions concerning why he offered tithe to God, what will he say? Those are the things that we want to look at. And what was the condition of his heart for giving tithe unto God? For giving tithing unto God. What was the condition? There are so many problems, highly controversial issues concerning this area here. Some people believe that once we have become born again and under the new covenant, the new covenant dispensation, there are different seven dispensations, under the dispensation of the new covenant, we don't have to tithe. We don't have to tithe. See, actually, we don't have to do anything. You really know. You don't have to, you should not do anything. But you choose to do anything and everything. You choose to. But people say, well, we shouldn't tithe under the New Testament because tithing was the Old Testament. We also know that Abraham and Jacob tithed 400, actually Abraham tithed 400 plus, maybe 430 years, depending upon where you calculate the years from. But 400 years before the law was given to Moses. So, so when Abraham started tithing, the law was not given. So, the, so, so people say, okay, then did Abraham tithe? Did, did that mean we should tithe? So that's a whole lot of controversial issues. Some people are also saying that if you don't give tithe, T-I-T-H, the 10%, you will be tithed. T-I-G-H-T. -T. That means if you don't give tithe, you're going to have problems. You know, some people say, well, if you don't give tithe, God will not bless you. So there are all kinds of theology going on. Now, so the one of the things I'd like you to notice is that we look at theology, but we also want to look at heartology. That's a word I just coined this afternoon. Heartology. So we're not only going to look at theology of Abraham, but we are going to look at his heartology or mindology. We're going to look at his mind and his heart condition. Not only theology, so we're going to look at theology, but we also want to look at heartology, your, the condition of the heart. Some people say that under the New Testament, we shouldn't tie under the, under, So there's a lot of confusion going on there. Now, I see myself as a student of the Bible, Bible student. That's how I see myself all the time, up to date. I'm, I keep learning. And I simply don't believe things because people say, I need to understand tithing for myself. So the things I'm going to share with you here is actually for me. It's not actually for you. It's for me and why I tithe. Although the question, the question is that should Christians tithe, we can even rephrase it and make it, we choose to give tithing. So I'm going to share with you the basis of my tithing. And I'm looking at Abraham, okay? And I'm oftentimes, when we look at Abraham tithing, we compare Abraham to the New Testament. And that's okay, because we are now under the New Testament. But I'm not actually comparing Abraham to the New Testament. I'm actually comparing Abraham, his heart, his mind, against the condition of my heart. That's what I'm doing today, is what was going on on his mind? Abraham, what was going on 
in his heart. So we're going to look at inside the mind and the heart of Abraham. Why? We're going to look at inside the heart and the mind of Abraham. Now you may say, why am I doing that? Now go with me to Hebrews chapter number 7. I'm taking my time today. Hebrews 7 and verse number 1 to 4. I'm reading from the NIV version. It says, This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God most high. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a thank of everything. First, his name means king of righteousness. Then also king of Salem means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, like the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. So we believe, Bible theologians, we all believe that Melchizedek, who met Abraham, and Abraham gave him a tenth, we believe that his, he was a priest, and his priesthood is a type of Jesus the Christ. That's what we believe. That's what actually the book of Rider, which I believe is Paul, you know, we don't know yet, but we believe he is comparing. Then the verse 4 says, just think how great he was, how great Melchizedek was. Even, I like the word, even the Petrarch Abraham gave him tenth of the plunder. Even. The Bible says we should think. In fact, the uh, Passion Translation says, stop, pause, and consider. So the reason why I'm using Abraham is because Bible says we should think. We should pause and think. We should pause and think. So that is what we are doing right now. So we are going to pause and really think about Abraham, uh, the giver. And the reason why we are concerned about Abraham is because, because the Bible says we should consider. And it was in reference to how great Melchizedek was, how great he was. And then he says, even, so the word even is emphasis, even the father Abraham, the great guy, the, 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 the big guy, Abraham was, he's one guy that Christians, Muslims, and Jews, all of us respect him because he's our father. He's a great, he's our forefather. He's, he's a patriarch. And the writer says, even the great Abraham, how as great as he was, Often tied to Melchizedek. That means that Abraham, so he's talking about how Abraham, in all his greatness, demonstrated greatness to Melchizedek. So his giving of tied to Melchizedek was demonstrating greatness or honoring. Let's use the word honor. And that's why I said, Why I honor God with my tithe. He honored Melchizedek. Now, one of the questions that people ask, they said, well, Abraham tied one time, which we're going to address that. Okay, so that is what we are doing. Why tight? We are looking inside the mind and the heart of Abraham. Now, why are we looking at Abraham? For several reasons. So if you're making a note, you can, you can make a note why we are looking at Abraham. For several reasons. Number one, Abraham was the first tiger. He was the first tiger. That's why we are looking at him. He began this whole problem of tithing. He started it. And he is our father after the flesh. He is the father of all, everything. The Bible called the, the, the father Abraham. He is the father. God called him my friend. He is the father so for Jews, for Christians, for Muslims, for, for Islam, Islamic religion. So he's a father, and he started this. The reason why we need to, 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 to consider Abraham is because he started tithing. If I ever meet Abraham, if you meet Abraham, it will not be uh, wrong to ask him, so father, why did you tithe? Why? Let's ask him. You know, let's put all theology somewhere, and let's talk to Abraham. Abraham, tell us, talk to us. Why did you type? What was going on in your mind, on your mind? What was going on in your heart? Why? why? It's a question we want to ask Abraham. Number two, the next question we're going to ask Abraham, because we are asking questions, 
is uh, sorry before the questions we are, we are we are talking about why we are looking at Abraham why um, the first why because he's the first title second reason is that he is the first patriarch he started the father the foundation is on him he is the foundation and he tight so if your father did something significant is it wrong so we want to find out him being the patriarch number three he was the first person God called out of idol worship after the flood of Noah. He was the first person God called from, from the tribe. First person. So there are so many first, first tiger, first patriarch, first person to be called out of the flood. Number four, he was the first person God asked to sacrifice his son. I, I, I don't know why. So, so we want to know why Abraham tied, and we want to find out. We want to. He is, he is our case study, the first person God called to tie. Number four, amazingly, he was the first person to be called a Hebrew. In other words, he started the Hebrew nation. Really, now the word Hebrew and Judah and Jew is under controversial issue, but the 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 the, 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 the story is that he was the first person to be called a Hebrew. Again, if you are watching with us, I'm trying to see if I can see that. I'm not seeing anything on my Facebook here. But if you're watching with us, I, I thank you for watching. Thank you so much. I'd like you to share. I, I, we will appreciate that if you can share this information about tithing inside the mind of Abraham. Inside the mind. We, today, we are not looking at anywhere. We are looking at inside his mind, inside his heart. Inside his mind, inside his heart. Inside his mind, inside his heart. So I said earlier on theology, we are looking at theology, but today we are also looking at heartology, inside his heart, mindology, inside his mind. That is what we are looking at. Why did Abraham tithe? That's the question. We're going to look at that. So we said several reasons. First tither, first patriarch, first to be called after the flood, first person that God required to sacrifice his son, first person to be called a Hebrew, and the first person who saw the Theophany, who saw Melchizedek, a type of the priesthood of Jesus. So you can see that it is very significant that we look at Abraham very, very well. We really, really, really want to take a good look at Abraham. Now, questions. Now, before I ask a question, let me read Genesis chapter number 14. At this time, Amphrel, the king of Shina, Amiel, king of Eliezer, uh, king of Elam, and Tudor, king of Gohim, went to war against, this is Genesis 14, against Bera, king of Sodom. Besha, king of Gomorrah, Shina, king of Amidash, Shemda, king of all these serious names, verse 3. All these latter kings joined forces in the valley of Sidon. Uh, for 12 years, they had been subject to Kedona, but in the 13th year they rebelled. In the 14th year, uh, they, war, they, 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 they went to war. Now look at verse 13. So in the war, they captured Abraham's nephew, Lot, and everything they owned. Verse 13 says, One who had escaped came and reported this to Abraham, the Hebrew. The Hebrew. Now, Abraham was living near the great trees of Mamre, the Amorite, a brother of Eskol and Anna, of whom were allied with Abraham. When Abraham heard that his relative had been taken captive, he called out the 318 trained men born in his household and went in pursuit as far as Dan. During that night, Abraham divided his men to attack them, and he routed them. And the Bible says that, um, and, and pursuing them as far as Hobah, north of Damascus, he recovered all the goods, hallelujah, and brought back his relative lot, amen, and his possessions, together with the women and the other people. After Abraham returned from defeating uh, the king and their ally, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shalem. Then the king said the king of Shalem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. And he blessed Abraham, saying, 
Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And, and blessed be God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. This is Melchizedek speaking. Then Abraham gave me a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and have taken an oath that I will not accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the throne of sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abraham rich. So Abraham apparently, before the battle, or right before he said this, he had raised his hand to God. There was a covenant, which we're going to talk about that in a minute. So we are saying that, why are we looking at Abraham? And we say that because he was the first to do so many things. He's our head flesh, he's our father. But then we run to another, another issue is questions. There are some questions that we have for Abraham. We are looking at Abraham. Today, the subject is, must Christians pay tithe? Should we give tithe? Should we honor God with our tithing? And the case study is Abraham. We are only looking at his mind, inside the mind of Abraham, inside the heart of Abraham. Because a lot of our problems is our heart condition. A lot of our issues is the condition of the heart. First question that we're going to ask for Abraham is, who told you to tithe? That's the first question. Now, if we ask so many questions, should we pay tithe in the New Testament? All that are good questions, but I think that we should ask Abraham. We should put him on the chair and say, Abraham, talk to us. You are our father. Talk to us. Who told you to give tithe? Who? Number two. If you couldn't get the answer to us, the next question is, where did you learn tithing from? Where? I don't know. Did he learn from Noah, from Adam? I don't know. So we want to ask him, where did you learn tithing from? That's a good question. And uh, you may say, well, maybe from the kings around the area, from the other customs, we don't know. But the question is, where did Abraham learned tithing from. The third question, the number three is, but Abraham, why 10%? Why not 12%, 18%, 20%? No, how about not 1%, 2%? But why specifically 10%? For Abraham, we want to know. Okay, question number four. Abraham, Question number four, why did you tithe immediately after victory? Why? Why did you tithe the timing of your tithe? Why after victory? I want to know. We want to know. Then question number five, why did you give the tithe to Melchizedek? What did you see about him? What is the significance of giving tithe to Melchizedek, whose priesthood is a type of Jesus the Christ? Today, we are looking at inside the mind of Abraham. That is all that we are looking at today. Inside the mind of Abraham. That is why I put this board right here. That is why I'm taking my time to say we are looking at Abraham's mind. He is our father. So we are looking at his mind and we are asking, why did Abraham tie? And we are asking questions. Who told him to tie? Where did he learn tithing from? Why 10%? Why did he give the tithe to Melchizedek? Why did he do that after victory? That this other question is, is, is very significant. Why did Melchizedek receive the tithe? I want to know. I, if, if I ever meet Abraham, I will say, this, I have questions, Father Abraham. Why did you do this? Okay. We may never know all these questions. Who told him to tie? Where did he learn from? Why 10%? Why Melchizedek? Why after victory? We may not know. But there are some clues 
that we can look at. So clue number one is coming from Old Testament, and clue number two will be coming from the New Testament. So let's look at clue number one about uh, why Abraham died. Genesis 26 and verse number five. So Genesis 26 and verse five. It says, now, um, this is God speaking. And let, let me read from verse one, actually. Genesis 26 verse one. Now there was farming in the land beside the earlier farming of Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and, and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I will tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you. And I will be with you, and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give these lands and will confirm the oath. I swore to your father Abraham. Watch this. This is God speaking. God said, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I'll give them all these uh, lands, and through your offspring, all the nations on earth will be blessed. Watch this, verse number five. Because Abraham obeyed me, okay, and kept my requirements, okay, my commands, my decrees, my laws. Really? Let me read again. Verse 5. Because Abraham obeyed me, God is speaking, and kept my requirements, my commands, my decrees, and my laws. We are trying to figure it out why Abraham died. And I said there are two clues that we can look at. Number one is Genesis 26 verse 5 says, God is speaking that Abraham kept my laws, my decrees, my requirements. What law was that? Because officially, you see, the law was given to Moses. So this other law God was talking about in Genesis 26 verse 5. What is that? Don't you think it's a good question to ask? Number one. Number two, this law God was talking about, is it about Abraham sacrificing Isaac? Is it about Abraham leaving his home country to the promised land? Is it about Abraham stop worshipping idols? Is it about Abraham circumcision? Is it about giving God a tithe? Now, what is interesting, he says, God says so many things. He says, because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements, and it's plural, requirements, comma, and plural, my commands. Hey, wow, that's interesting. Comma, my decrees, comma, and my laws. <laughs> People, where did God give this to Abraham? We may, this, this is a clue. Is it, did he have a revelation about giving a tithe unto God? Did God give him something? Did God tell him something? Because God had given him laws. God had given him laws, decrees, requirements, statutes. Was it everything he did or was it for only one thing? If it was one thing, the Bible didn't use the word S. There will not be S added. It will be maybe, I gave him a law. So we know that maybe one law, and we can hope, we can say that maybe it's a one law, it could have been for the, 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 the circumcision. But what is interesting is somebody says laws, then decrees, then requirements. So is it possible? Theologians, I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking a question. Is it possible that, that Abraham, 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 Abraham had a revelation that maybe I can honor God with my giving? We don't know. But obviously, according to this verse, God gave Abraham laws, requirements, decrees, and statutes. And God said, Abraham obeyed me. I'm almost about to say, maybe 95%, God asked him to do so. I don't have a proof, and you can argue with me, and that is fine. 
because there's no proof. I'm just asking a question. Because you and I don't know all these laws, these statutes, and these decrees that God gave to Abraham. We don't know. But God said he obeyed my words. But Melchizedek received it. He received the target from Abraham. Was it as a response to a revelation that my father, see, if my father met God, if my natural father met God, and something significant happened and he did something, won't it be a, a good thing for me to do it? Well, what do you think? <laughs> if, if my father met God and truly, as his response to God, he did something, let's assume that tithing was never even practiced in the law. Okay? Let's assume tithing was never practiced in the law. Let's assume it was not even mentioned in the New Testament. Although it was, they say it was not mentioned. But Abraham did that, and he had a revelation. He did that. Melchizedek received it, okay? Because there are so many things that people try to do toward angels or people who review themselves, and they say, no, 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 don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But others, they receive it. You know, Gideon, we're talking about Abraham, he served the angel, and they all ate and all that. They receive it. Melchizedek received the offering. Was it in an obedience toward what Abraham had seen from God? I want to repeat Genesis 26, verse 3. Genesis 26, verse 3. Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements with an S, my commands with an S, my decrees with an S, and my laws, and my point is, even if tithing was never mentioned in the, New Testament, in the Old Testament, this is the only time. Let's say this is the only time tithing is mentioned. And it was done by our father, all of us, our father is Abraham. Don't you think it would be a great thing to emulate him? Hallelujah. That if he saw Jesus in the Old Testament, Melchizedek, a type of Jesus, and in his Act of response, act of worship. Let's take all the rules aside. He he's, he offered ten percent. Wouldn't it be a good thing for you and I to say maybe there's something there that we need to learn inside the mind and the heart of Abraham, inside the mind and the heart of Abraham. So we use a clue one is Genesis twenty six verse number three, verse three. I said verse five. I'm wrong. Verse number three. Clue number two is coming from Hebrews chapter number seven and verse number four. So we have two clues. One is in the Old Testament. The other one is in the New Testament. Uh, Hebrews seven verse four. It says, just think. That's what I'm thinking. I'm, I've been thinking a lot because like I said earlier on, I don't do things just because somebody said it. I see myself as a Bible student, and I really want to make sure I understand something. Both theology and heartology. I just coined that word, heartology and mindology. I want to make sure that I understand what I'm doing. Just think, the Bible says, think how great he was, Melchizedek. Even, even. So even the Petrarch, Abraham. Even. Oh, wow. So Abraham was great than you and I. He was great. And in his greatness, he recognized another greatness. And when the great Abraham recognized the great Melchizedek, he gave him a tenth. In fact, the King James says the best spoil, the, the, the best of all that he had. So what does that mean? Could it be that Abraham's in his response to the revelation of Jesus in the Old Testament, he says, let me honor God with this 10% of my tithe. Let me honor God. Now, I wrote down seven observations that I want to share with you, both from the account of Genesis and the account of Hebrews 7. I wrote down seven different observation. Amen. Number one, that 
the giving of the tithe that Abraham gave to Melchizedek was to acknowledge and honor God and a greatness. Abraham was great, but in his greatness, he chose to give 10% in honor to Melchizedek. So it was an act of worship, an act, the giving of his tithe was an act of, of worship, as condition, my condition, an act of worship to honor Abraham. That is why we read in Hebrews 7, 4, that even for the Abraham. Number two, look at, number two is, he acknowledged that victory come from God. Now, victory comes, so in his giving of the tithe, he was acknowledging that victory came from God, that the victory he had, look at Genesis 14 and verse number 22. So the kings, his allies, went to Abraham and they said, give us, now before I do that, let me read verse number 20. When the king said they met Abraham, this is what he said. Bless the God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hand. It means that it is not, I see when I'm giving my tithe to God, I it's a form of my worship that my job is from God, my education from God. The fact that I, I'm able to talk is from God. So it is my recognition, my response, my gratitude my gratefulness in response to God. His grace. That is my second observation. And so my Isaac said to Abraham, Abraham, I am going to bless God who delivered your enemies into your hand. The whole month the job you have, the school you have, you wake up, put all that, you, you, you recognize that those things are all from God and in your response, Abraham offered the tenth. My third observation, Abraham tied because God has blessed him. 14 verse 19 to 20. Watch this. First of all, God gave me victory. Verse 19 says, and, and he blessed Abraham, saying, He blessed Abraham by God most high, creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high. That as you just read. Abraham gave tied to God based on what God had done in his life. Okay. One of the problems that people, question people ask me is when they ask a question, it appears as though they are given tight for God to bless them. So it's difficult that, you know, I'm giving God is not blessing me. No, it's the other way around. It is your response to the mercy and the goodness of God. Tithing is your response. It's not that you are using that to twist the hand of God and tell God what to do in your life. No, it is your gratitude, your gratefulness response to his mercy and his grace. Abraham recognized that. And so he gave. That's number three. Number four is that, um, see, number three, I said, his giving was a response of God's blessing. Number four, when he gave to God, God blessed him too. See, in the Old Testament, it says that Melchizedek blessed Abraham, look at verse 20, and blessed be God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abraham gave him. So this test show us that number one, Abraham had victory, and number two, Melchizedek blessed him. Now, after he blessed Abraham in his response he gave to God. 
Okay. But then the fourth point you are making is that when you give to God, God bless you. You see the point? So number one, giving, giving of tithing is a response. But it is also a sign of obedience which God rewards. Now look at uh, uh, um, Hebrews 7 and verse number 6. Hebrews chapter number 7 and verse number 6. It says, This man Abraham, however, uh, did not trace his descent from Levi, yet he collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed him who had the promise. What he's talking about is that Melchizedek blessed Abraham. When we give to God, God bless us. Uh, our obedience is rewarded. So you give in response to God, but when you give, God also bless you. You know, someone asked me on Facebook, he said, Pastor Kwame, how about uh, uh, the Bible saying that we, we reap what we sow, but we've been sowing tight and tight and tight and tight and tight. Paul talked about reaping what you sow in Galatians and First Corinthians and other places. We reap what we sow. However, it is God who determines the specific things he does. He is the rewarder, Hebrews 13, 6. And God doesn't tell us, he doesn't negotiate with us what he does with our obedience. He will bless us. In fact, God's blessing is such material. <laughs> that is why when they took away Joseph's clothes and attacked him, they thought the blessing was in his garment. That was a big mistake. Welcome. When God bless you, nobody can touch it. It's, it's the spiritual stuff that manifests itself physically, right? So God determines the blessing. We don't determine the blessing. We, we try to, but I would encourage you to take your foot off and let God be God in your life when you obey God. So um, the, the fifth thing that I, I, uh, I observe here is that he did not tithe by force. Neither was he stingy. See, okay, some people don't, are so difficult for them to, to give. Okay, now Abraham didn't do that under pressure. At the same time, he was careful to have a gratitude heart. Great gracefulness, gratitude for what God has done. Yesterday at church in all nations where our bishop, Bishop Frank Fosopier, God bless him. Um, you know, I broke into tears when they were singing about grace. Uh, this lady in London who sang the song about grace, I broke into tears because I look into my life for a second and I couldn't help but to be overwhelmed by all that God has done in my life and just be broken. Can, can you be, can you have a grateful heart today? Number six, Abraham did not tithe according to law. Earlier on, I said maybe it was a law God gave him, but he tied because of love, not law, L-A-W. It wasn't law, L-A-W, but it's love. No, he said, Pastor Kwame, why are you saying that? It doesn't say in the Bible. But God tested Abraham sometimes later about love, and he said, now I know you love me. Really? Obviously, God was measuring the love condition of Abraham's heart. Do you love God? Do you really, really love God? So for me, tithing is the beginning of all giving. People ask me, tithing is a part of giving, but it is the beginning. I believe that in all our lives, before God ever calls at home or he comes home, it will be a great thing to even increase your giving from 10%. Really, I believe that. Because anything and everything you have came from God, by the way. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> everything, you know, and so the question becomes, that number seven, I, I talk about seven of the days, number seven. When Abraham, tithing um, was 
not just an Old Testament thing or a New Testament thing. It was a legacy thing, a legacy thing. It was to a sign to link that time of Abraham to the revelation he had concerning God and how God put the whole thing into the Levitical system for the future generation to learn the heart of Abraham. Today, I guess I'd like you to learn the heart of Abraham. It is okay. You may not understand the theology that comes with it, but you can look at Abraham's heart and his mind. A heart of gratitude. That the ten percent, it is supposed to be the beginning. So while we are looking at theology, because a lot of the times when we, whenever we talk, we, we mention tithing, we immediately go on theology, and it is good. You must know your Bible. I wish Christians know their Bible big time. I wish they do, but you must also not forget the heartology, the condition of human heart. Is it a big thing that all the blessings of God for my life, that I make a covenant, that the minimum I can give to God is 10%? Here's my last thing, then, then I'll be close. Abuse. It's, 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 it's a fact. People abuse tithing. It's a fact. Anything and everything can be abused. Tithing. Uh, women submitting themselves to men. Men can abuse that. Women can abuse. There's all kinds of abuse that, that you can use the Bible to abuse or beat somebody. You, you can even use the Bible to sin. You, you, you can use the Bible to do anything you want to do. It doesn't change the fact that God has truth in His Word. Maybe Abraham had a revelation about giving to God. Maybe he had a revelation. And if you look into his heart, when you look into your heart, and Abraham was your father, and he gave tithing to God, what do you think? God bless you so very much for the time we spent together. Send me your questions. I'll do my best. And please subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook. Um, like, follow, like our Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, I have two channels. Uh, one, I am a